as the weather in Austin, Texas has been really windy lately. I haven't been able to get out to fly as much as I'd like. So I wanted to share something that I've been working on. Some of you may be aware of DronePan, an app that I'd written for DJI aircraft that allows you to do 360 degree panoramas. And what I wanted to do is replicate that in the world of 3DR, possibly on the Solo, maybe on some other PixHawk builds, but regardless of whether or not I'm actually able to get a drone pan working in the world of PixHawk, I want to show software in the loop and what you can do with it. It's actually pretty amazing. It's a great simulator and I want to walk through the steps of getting it set up. But before I do, let me actually just show you this in action. So you have a console with all sorts of telemetry, your map where you can load different locations. By default, I'm working with Arducopter, and this is the console where I can run commands. Let me just demonstrate. I'm going to put this quadcopter into guided mode, and then I'm going to arm the throttle. And then let's just go ahead and take off to, let's say, 30 meters. And you can see the different Mavlink commands that are being sent. You can see the altitude increasing. And then on the map, Obviously, you're not going to be able to see much just because we're moving vertically. But let me go ahead and do a fly to. And then what you can see is that the simulated quadcopter is now flying to the new location. So lots of interesting things you can do as well as tap into drone kit, which I'll demonstrate a little bit later in this video. So let me go ahead and begin the process of showing you how to set this up. Now there is a link to this how-to document below. It's great for walking you through the steps to get set up. Now I prefer to use virtualization because I'm on a Mac. So this process should work with Windows, Mac, or even Linux if you want to go that route. There are native installs that you can do, I believe, for Linux and Windows. But in this case, I'm going to use Vagrant. Prerequisites, you'll need VirtualBox, which is a virtualization software provided by Oracle and you can see that there are versions for different hosts. I'm on a Mac and install is very easy. I've already gone ahead and done that. In addition to VirtualBox, you'll need Vagrant, which is sort of like a scripting tool that allows you to deploy new virtual machines and have them configured however you want. So the ArduPilot code actually has a Vagrant script that we'll get into here in a few minutes. This is the ArduPilot code repository on GitHub, and it's what we'll be downloading to our local computer to do software in the loop simulations. So I'm going to copy this URL to my clipboard. So I'm going to run git. Make sure that you have git installed. You can get that easily. So I'm going to do a git clone and then the URL that we just copied, and that will download the code from GitHub to our local machine. Now with our ArduPilot code downloaded, we're going to change directory into the ArduPilot code base, and this is what you'll see in GitHub, and you'll notice this Vagrant file, which if you take a look here, it's a little config file for our Vagrant setup. Now we'll actually be revisiting this here in a few minutes, but what we'll do next is we'll go ahead and bring up our VM and what we'll type is we'll type Vagrant and you can see that if you have Vagrant installed you have these command options and what we'll run next is the Vagrant up command to bring our VM up. Now what I like to do normally just so I know the time that things take is I'll put a little time command in front of our Vagrant command and that will tell us how long uh, the process takes and you can see a bunch of downloads are happening everything will get configured now if you don't have Ubuntu trusty 32 installed then it will go ahead and download and install that for you so that vagrant up command will take care of all of that and get your environment up and running our VM is now up and running. You can see our time command told us that it took 6 minutes and 19 seconds. That time may vary on your machine, obviously. So now what we're going to do is log into the machine. So I'll type Vagrant 
SSH. And you can see we're logged in and it tells you the autopilot environment is ready and to run sim vehicle to begin simulation. Now let me mention this because I spent a lot of time and didn't really notice uh, this big red block right here. It points out that you should use a absolute reference to sim vehicle. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do a sudo and give a absolute reference to this script to run it. So now we'll go ahead and run our script. I'll put a time command in front of it just so that we can see how long this is going to take. And I'll also use this dash J parameter that tells it to use two processors. We'll run that. And for the first time, it's actually going to build the code base. So this could take quite a while. So I'll let it run. And then when it's done, we can get into the simulation. So the compilation finished and the simulator started up. I went ahead and canceled the simulation just so you could see the time here. It took almost three minutes to run. So I'll go ahead and now run this again. And since it's already built, you can see that it throws me immediately into the simulator. And you can see also that since I didn't specify what firmware I wanted to use, I'm running APM Copter here. And you'll also notice that there isn't a console and a map like I showed at the beginning of the video. And I'll get to that in just a minute. But right now, the simulator is running. You can see it just gave a flight battery message. I can type mode. It tells me that we're unstabilized, so I can switch to a guided mode. I can arm throttle and also take off. We'll go back to 30 meters again. Now, obviously, we can't see this, but what you do get is some feedback here. As this takes off, you'll see that it echoes the height of the simulated quadcopter in the console. So what I'll do next is we'll show how to actually get a nice GUI so that we can see the console as well as the map when we're running the simulator. Now to get some sort of UI, it's a little bit tricky, especially when you're doing virtualization because you need to use something called X11 and do forwarding. Now in this case, I'm going to use X quartz because I'm on a Mac. And what I'll do is edit our Vagrant file, which has all sorts of parameters. Now you can edit in any program that you like. In this case, I'm used to VI. And I'm just going to put this parameter in here. It's called config SSH forward X11. And I'll save that. And now we can connect to our VM and hopefully get a UI to display. Now, the way we'll connect to this VM is a little different this time. I'm going to use this command ssh-x, which tells it to do x11 forwarding. And then we're connecting on the local host since that's where our box is running. And I'll just accept that. The default password for this setup is vagrant. And now you can see we're connected just as we were before. And now we'll still run sim vehicle, but you can see that I'm going to use a map and a console parameters. So let's go ahead and run that and see if we can get those to uh, show up. There we go. You can see those are being forwarded from the VM to my local machine. There's our copter. And we can get all sorts of information like param show. And that shows us all of the parameters that you would normally see maybe in Mission Planner. And I encourage you to check out some of the help commands. You can see all the different commands that are supported here. And as I demonstrated earlier, you can simulate a flight. You can set altitude, waypoints, RTL, all sorts of fun stuff. And this is purely software simulation running the same firmware that you're hardware in the field will be running. One thing that I had intended to do in this video was cover drone kit and we're running a bit long. So in an upcoming video, I'll show you uh, drone kit Python, which you can do both in the software simulator as well as with a aircraft in the field. I'm going to be using it with my QAV 500. But I just wanted to put this together because I thought it would be useful to show you guys how to mess around with some of the software simulation. Drone Kit will allow us to do some really interesting things. So please stay tuned. If you guys have any questions or comments, please post them below. 
and until next time, thanks for watching.